I was really ambivalent about doing this vlog because, in fact, I wasn't going to do it because I didn't want to appear. One is I woke up really shitty. I've got the flu. I'm still jet lagged. And um, I didn't want to come across that I was showing off, but I want to tell you my car story. I'm getting a new car today. I'm a bit flat at the moment. I don't feel a bit excited about it. So I know I don't want that to come across as feeling ungrateful. I'm just, I'm just flat. So I've been picked up by my business partner. This is the, the, the legendary, my business is called Hayes Winkle. This is the Winkle part of Hayes. And I've been good friends with Michelle for, how long? 15 years. That's my business partner, Michelle. Hi. So you gotta understand, I'm a car guy, okay? I love cars. When I was a kid, I had hardworking parents, but I was always embarrassed about the car that my parents had. And you know, like a lot of kids, you know, I, I had the Kmart runners, I just wanted a pair of Nikes. For me, a car or how I presented physically meant so much to me. And I don't know why, but it's it just sort of the way it was. Since coming into real estate and earning, you know, some good money, um, I've been able to buy what I've wanted to buy in regards to cars. Before real estate, I was, we were a one owner car. We had one car in the family. Uh, me and my um, now ex-wife um, would share it. It was a Hyundai. And it used to be, you know, do we, do we replace the ball tires on the Hyundai or do we pay the, um, the electricity bill? I know what it's like to struggle, but I've traveled a lot around the world. And I think if you've got electricity, food and a roof over your head, you're living the dream ultimately compared to some of the stuff I've seen. So cars to me have been a big part of my life. I used to draw them as a kid and um, I used to buy a magazine called Unique Cars um, when I was about 12 years old and I used to play a game where I'd flip through the pages and I'd pretend if I had $20,000, what car would I buy on the page? And um, you know, I just, I just, I wanted to get a good car one day, you know, so I've always loved European cars. I've loved Porsches, Lamborghinis, Ferraris, BMWs, Audis, Mercedes. Real estate for me has given me an opportunity to um, to own some of these things. What's really bizarre, it's not bizarre, is that where I'm going today, when I was 12 years old, when I was 14 years old, when I was 16 years old, when I was 22 years old, I used to go to this place and stand out the front. I used to play this game. I used to look through the window and think, one day, one day, one day, I'm going to buy one. And um, I'd never look at a brand new one because I never thought I'd be able to ever afford a brand new one. I used to look at the second hand ones, you know. Nighttime, I'd be depressed, I'd be feeling flat, and I'd find myself there at 1 a.m. peering through the window. Okay, let's go get the car. I've got to be honest, Winkle, I can't believe how dirty your car is. I'm looking after it really well. See? How long have you owned your car for? I've owned it for 18 months. 18 months? So, 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 so this was a brand new car 18 months ago. Yes. It's a 218 model, brand new 18 months ago. And how many kilometers have you done on it? 98,220. <laughs> so she's done, she's about to hit 100,000 kilometers. Um, that's a lot of driving. So the story goes, I went into real estate at the age of 31 and um, I borrowed $20,000 and I bought an Audi little A3. And for me to drive an Audi after you know, sharing a Hyundai was just, you know, was like unbelievable. I just felt like a king. I sold my first home in week two of real estate, made three and a half thousand dollars, and I thought, wow, I love this job. Um, if I just work harder than anybody else, work longer hours, show more enthusiasm, I'm gonna make a ton of money. At month four of my real estate career, I was doing really, really well. I didn't realize how well I was doing, but my boss at the time said, listen, Danny, if you sell four in this month, I'm gonna give you a car allowance. And he said, I'll give you $600 a month car allowance. And I knew down at BMW dealership that they had a car there, which was a red 318i. It was a 2000, it was 2004. This was a 2002 model. And it had about 30,000 Ks on it. And I knew that for me to lease it, it was $660 a month. And I knew that my car allowance, I thought my heart had raced. I thought I can maybe get a BMW. So I was really hard. I think I sold six that month and I got a permanent car allowance of $600 a month. I traded my Audi on this red BMW where I'm going to now. And I sat in it, had cream leather and I had tears in my eyes. At the age of 31, I finally had my BMW. And you know, no longer did I, it was a second hand one. It didn't matter to me, it was two years old. It was like brand new, it was amazing. And, and that's my BMW. Fast forward 15 years, 
I'm heading to BMW again. <laughs> so this is the BMW dealership I used to come to. And it's it's Geelong dealership, Rick's Corral. So I used to stand about here and there used to be glass. And as a kid, I used to just peer in the window. You know, I used to come here all the time. So when I was 31, when I picked up my red BMW, it was really, really emotional. Today I'm picking up a new BMW again. I don't know how many BMWs I've owned. And um, I don't say this to be um, show off. Egotistical. Yeah, I don't say it to be egotistical. Um, pinching yourself. What? You're pinching yourself that I'm not really pinching myself. I feel depressed as fuck. But anyway, I'm trying to be happy. Is that too honest? I think that's my car. I just got my little camera, how are you, mate? Yeah, you're that. No, well, I'm not. I, 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 I wake up shitty, but I feel. Bill's the big fish. He doesn't normally do this stuff, do you, Phil? Oh, I don't normally do this stuff. He doesn't do this stuff only for me because I'm I'm what's called a high maintenance. <laughs> a VIP, a VIP customer is what we refer to you. Phil, over the years, without going into too many ups and downs, how many cars do you reckon I've purchased here and staffed? Do you reckon? We'd have to be probably in the thirties. 30, 30 cars, somewhere around there. I would have thought in that vicinity. This is your car. Have now. I bought this car? You have bought this car. You're about to drive away in it. I'm about to drive away in it. <laughs> I am excited now. Hang on, let's have a look. Let's get this. Phil, did you know I bought my first BMW from here? I didn't know your BMW. Did you buy your first yeah. BMW? From 318i here? from that little Italian guy. Oh, Angelo. Angelo. Angelo, yeah. It was 2004 and it was a 2002 model. And. Um, but as a kid, I used to stand there at the age of 12, 13, 14 and peer in the window and dream about getting a BMW one day because my parents owned a Kingswood <laughs> and everybody else had Ford Falcons and newer cars and I felt really embarrassed about that yep. as a kid. You know how, like yep. I was, like did you have the Kmart runners or did you have the Nike runners? No, I had the Kmart runners, I had the, uh, the white imitation Adidas Rhymes that I got embarrassed in grade five when I drew the third stripe on. <laughs> <laughs> So there you go. So Phil relates to not having good runners. All I wanted was a pair of Nikes as a kid. Yeah, all I wanted was Adidas. He wanted Adidas and he drew the third stripe on. Oh, that's terrible. This is just a sad blog. <laughs> It's got the MPAC on it, and the reason I got this car is it's got the 22 inch rims. It's got 22 inch rims, the 22 inch rims. It's got the little M there. Um, now it's also got the sports exhaust, hasn't it? It has, it's got the air performance exhaust. Check out the inside. Phil, I know you're not going to know this. Yes. What are some of the features of this car? Some of the features of this car are an amazing array of safety features. <laughs> Can you get that any closer to your head? <laughs> An amazing array. <laughs> so, is this the Povo pack? No, this is not the Povo pack. This is the M Sport pack. The M Sport pack with 22 inch. With 22 inch. It's called the Performance pack on top of the M Sport pack. Oh, so, so I've got the performance pack. So you have the performance pack. So the performance pack includes the 22 inch alloy wheels, yep. the M performance exhaust, yep. and also the metallic paint. So I'm about to take the car. Phil's just going to pair the phone. And that, that's, they were going to go through the options, but I just, I don't want to do that. That's okay. That's absolutely fine. That's okay. Yep. But they do give you that option. They, don't you normally allow an hour? We allow, yeah, we allow an hour in total. So normally that's 50 minutes in the car running through operations and... 50 and minutes, yeah. I don't know. We've got, we've got three minutes. Let's go. <laughs> right, let's get your phone paired. So... Thanks, mate. No Thanks for your help. See ya. Enjoy it. If you have any questions, go out. Okay.
laughing at how many Ks I've done in my car. Listen, over it. she's done 100,000 in 18 months. Phil, you'll give her a good, what will you give her for that? I'll give her a great trade-in. <laughs> I'll have to come back to you on the exact figure. <laughs> I just want to show you a really cool feature about this car. Phone, put it here. It automatically charges, wireless charging, pretty good for real estate agent. I love the dash, it's a full digital dash. Like look, all digital, all digital. Such a nice fit out. Um, I feel like I am in a luxury car. Look, as I'm moving, and that's, that's the rear. That's pretty impressive. Okay, let's try not to crash. Feels weird feels clean it feels new so back to business and back to luxury cars and why some people are obsessed with owning the latest and greatest and other people don't care just my experience and this is going to be a little bit quirky what I'm going to talk about and a little bit psychological I guess to some degree but I find that the very best salespeople are dysfunctional as hell I feel that they're lacking something so they have to overcompensate in their lives which can make them be incredibly successful and make them a lot of money. So a lot of people might say, well, he's cocky and super confident, but if anyone knows me, I lack confidence and I lack chronically self-esteem and self-worth. So I tend to overcompensate and overdo it. So I'm either down or I'm really up. So I fight to try and find balance in my life, um, which might shock a lot of people. So, um, so my drive and my determination and my ambition um, comes from a place where I don't feel good enough, so I have to overdo it. You know, the good thing about that is that you achieve, or from the outside world, the perception, people might say, well, he's successful or she's successful, but ultimately it's how you feel inside. And um, I can still have a lot of material things and feel totally empty. I think the secret to life is to try and find fulfillment in the simple things and the best things in life sounds tacky but the best things in life are for free and um, it's so easy to be caught up in um, judging people through the material and not knowing who they actually are as a person and um, for me the journey of life the journey of business the journey of being a dad the journey of being a, a partner or an ex-partner is to try and um, do it from a place of care and love um, and and try and you know have empathy for people and compassion I don't know where I'm headed with this just gonna reverse the car for the very first time reverse park okay let's see how good that looks from the outside okay it's a little bit wonky <laughs> 